Now we talk about the heart, the pumping organ. Heart of human beings it fo is four chambered, as all the mammals do have. It have two upper chambers called atria and two lower chambers called the ventricles. Heart of a human being is the, is the size of a clenched fist. If you make it like this, it's of that size. And um, um, all of these four chambers have the lumens. Between the atria and the ventricles, uh, there are valves which are separating the atria with ventricles, ventricles with atria. And we know that um, uh, from the vessels that heart is giving away uh, one large vessel, one large artery, the aorta, and uh, the other one is the um, uh, inferior vena cava and superior vena cava, which it is receiving from the body. Um, heart have two types of valves. One, one, are, one group is called the semilunar valves, which are present in the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein, which are actually, which actually separate the pulmonary artery um, and, the, and the aorta with the, with the chambers of the heart. And the other group is called the atrioventricular valves, the valves which are present between the atria and the ventricles. So we call them atrioventricular. Um, now there is a right side of the heart and there is a left side of the heart. Right side of the heart actually um, receives the blood from the body, from the vena cava, and then uh, send it towards the lungs uh, through the pulmonary artery to let it oxygenate. The left, side, uh, the left side of the heart, on the other hand, receives blood from oxygenated blood from the lungs and then send it to the aorta. Uh, now, because we know that lungs are close to the heart uh, and the other body tissues are far away. So the left side of the heart, which have to send blood towards the body, is more strong. Its walls are more thick in comparison to the right side. Because the right side have to receive blood uh, from the body and it have to send it towards the lungs, which are close. So the left part of the heart is more stronger. Uh, this is the reason that, that we normally feel the heart is present more on the left side because left side is more strong and is more strongly contracting all the time. Let's have a look on the structure of human heart. Look at the diagram. Uh, on the right side, for the ease of understanding, the blood is shown in blue because it's deoxygenated. On the left side, the blood is shown in red because it's, it's, it is oxygenated. The upper chambers are called atria, right atrium and the left atrium. The lower chambers are the ventricles, right ventricle and the left ventricle. You can observe that the wall of the left ventricle is more thick in comparison to the wall of the right, right ventricle. Now we look at the vessels, which are, uh, first of all, we look at the veins, which are, giving, which are taking blood from the body and returning to the heart. In the blue, uh, on uh, the right side, you can see inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. Both are returning blood and they are opening inside the right atrium. They open into the right atrium and give blood to the right atrium. Then on the other side, look at the left atrium. That left atrium is receiving blood from by the pulmonary vein. So pulmonary vein is actually opening inside the left atrium. It is giving oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. Left and right atria contract at the same time. It means that both atria are filled at the same time. The right atrium is filled by deoxygenated blood from the inferior and superior vena cava, but the uh, left atrium is filled with the blood coming from the lungs through pulmonary vein then both of the atria contract at the same time. When they contract, the atrioventricular valves, they open and they allow the flow of blood towards ventricles. On the right side, you can see the valve, uh, atrioventricular valve. This is called a tricuspid valve because it has three flaps. But on the left side, you can see a valve uh, between the left atrium and the right and the left ventricle uh, is called a uh, bicuspid valve because it have 
um, uh, two flaps. So, um, uh, so when the uh, atria are filled with blood, they contract and they release their blood inside the ventricles because of opening of the atrioventricular valves, the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve. When the ventricle is filled, ventricle contracts and both ventricles, again just like the atria, both ventricles contract at the same time. Left ventricle, uh, as you can see in the diagram, is connected to the aorta, the aortic arch. Um, before the aortic arch, uh, the major vessel, which is called aorta, so left ventricle pushes the blood with pressure into the uh, aorta. And you can see there is a valve between aorta and the uh, left ventricle. This valve is called a semilunar valve. When the ventricles contract, then the AV valves, the atrioventricular valves, both, they are closed. Because, as I said, both of the ventricles will contract at the same time. And both of the AV valves, they are closed. When they close, they produce a sound. And this sound we call a lub sound. You see, the heart sound is lub tub, lub tub, lub tub. The lub sound is actually the sound of closing of this wall. Um, and then the dub sound is the result of the, um, uh, of the closing of the walls, of the semilunar walls, the other, other walls. So this is the reason uh, that when you, your doctor want to assess that whether your uh, heart walls are uh, working correctly or not, they listen through a stethoscope to the sounds of your heart and then they guess that uh, due to the sounds that your uh, walls are uh, correctly working or maybe there is a problem in the walls. Uh, now we come back uh, to the right atrium. As you can see in the, in the right ventricle, that when uh, the ventricle is filled, just like the left ventricle, ventricles at the same time contract. Through right ventricle, blood goes towards the uh, pulmonary artery. That is, this is the artery which is taking blood from the, taking this deoxygenated blood from the ventricle, uh, right ventricle, towards the lungs. And in the lungs, this blood is oxygenated and then again it is uh, returned back uh, to the heart uh, through the pulmonary vein. Now, uh, actually the right atria, so I just simply um, repeat the whole process, that is the right atrium is filled by the inferior and superior uh, vena cava and the left atrium is uh, filled by the blood coming through the pulmonary vein from the lungs in the right atrium there is deoxygenated blood, in the left atrium there is oxygenated blood. And then both atria contract at the same time, the atrioventricular AV valves are open and blood goes to the ventricles. Then the ventricles contract, when they contract, then the AV valves are closed. And, blood, and uh, the semilunar valves which are present, one in the aorta and the other in the pulmonary vein, they are open and blood moves or it is thrown towards the aorta uh, from the left ventricle and towards the pulmonary vein from the right ventricle. And uh, when the ventricles relax again, then the semilunar walls, they are closed. This prevents actually backflow of the uh, blood towards the ventricles. Now we, um, uh, we just described the structure of uh, the heart. Uh, we go ahead to talk about the heartbeat and the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle or the heartbeat. Cardiac cycle is actually a cycle that starts from filling of the atria, then filling of the ventricles and contraction of the ventricles to push, push the blood towards the uh, lungs or the body. This whole process from the filling to still sending uh, is called a cardiac cycle. Uh, during cardiac cycle, when the atria are filling, then the, all, the muscles, all the muscles of the heart are relaxed. Not, uh, atria are not contracting, ventricles are also not contracting. We call this situation a diastole. Then, first of all, when atria are filled, they contract. We call it atrial systole, that is, atria are contracting. Then, ventricles are filled due to atrial contraction. We call it 
ventricular ventricular systole and uh, atrial systole is um, is uh, of less power is less strong in comparison to the ventricular systole because ventricles have to uh, send blood blood towards uh, far away tissues or towards lungs but atria just have to send to the uh, send blood to the ventricles which are just very close just attached to each other um, we look at a diagram to uh, make the cardiac cycle more clear step 1 atrial and ventricular diastole you can see all the muscles are relaxed and in this condition uh, at this time the av valves they are open and the semi lunar valves they are closed and you can see that this condition and this is the time when the atria are filling when the atria are filling blood is returning from the body and uh, blood is coming back the oxygenated blood is coming back from the lungs in the atria atrium in the left atrium this is called um, diastole this this lasts for 0.4 seconds then atria are filled and when atria are filled they contract this is called atrial systole and this is ventricular diastole because ventricles are still not contracting they are relaxed this stage lasts for only 0.1 seconds it means that atria contract for only 0.1 seconds then the ventricles are filled with blood due to atrial atrial contraction then the ventricles contract as you can see in the third part this is called ventricular systole and this is atrial diastole cuz atria are now relax ventricles they are now contracting during this time blood is uh, pushed from the ventricles towards the aorta and blood is pushed from the uh, from the left ventricle to aorta and from the right ventricle to the pulmonary vein at this time the as you can see in the diagram that av valves tricuspid and bicuspid valves are closed and the semi lunar valves they are open in the aorta and in the um, uh, pulmonary vein this lasts for about 0.3 seconds um, and then all of the uh, chambers of the heart they are again relaxed and come back to a diastole this whole process is called a cardiac cycle and this cardiac cycle makes one heart beat we observe one heart beat one heart beat actually consists of this whole cycle and we know that human heart contracts for about 72 times a minute about 72 beats a minute normally sometimes when we are exercising or we are doing some other activity um this may change um to this may increase or sometimes may decrease but mostly if you are it is it is 72 um, times per minute um so this was about the cardiac cycle now we look at the electrical activity of the heart which is behind all this contraction and relaxation let's have a look on a diagram we may have heard of a pacemaker heart mein ek pacemaker hota hai agar kisi ka kharab ho jaye to ek electrical organ uski jagah lagaya jata hai jo ki artificial pacemaker kehlata hai look at this diagram in yellow color it is showing the pacemaker and its connections heart heart muscles are involuntary these are not in our conscious control these are automatically contracting and relaxing as it is required by the body this is due to electrical system present inside the heart heart have certain ner nerves we can say nervous system um which is shown in yellow in this diagram on the top on the uh, top of the right atrium um where it is uh, uh, it is uh, uh, actually connected to the vena cava is close to the vena cava there is a thick there is a thick group of muscles which is called sinoatrial node we also call it a pacemaker this is a group of muscles which actually can generate an impulse or electrical activity itself when it generates an impulse then this impulse passes towards the auricles and this impulse is generated by the pressure of blood from vena cava towards the uh, auricles this impulse is generated spread to through the art, uh, auricles and the auricles they contract actually auricles is the other name for atria 
to the atria contract. Then slowly, this impulse come or this electrical activity comes down towards another um, uh, bundle, which is called an AV bundle. That is atrioventricular bundle. Here, it is um, we can say accelerated. Its uh, uh, its magnitude is increased, and then it moves towards the ventricles. When its magnitude is increased, when it reaches the ventricles, it creates a more strong impulse and more strong contraction. Due to this reason, heart always continue to contract and then relax. So this is the pacemaker. The SI node, sinoatrial node, is also called sometimes the pacemaker, which generates impulse, which spread through the atria, and then its magnitude is increased, and then it enters the ventricles and contract the ventricles as well. So this was about the electrical activity of the heart.